Hey guys, Brian uh, with Aquascape here. Welcome to our first ever virtual pond tour. This is actually gonna be a lot of fun. Can't wait to go out and show you guys some of the projects we've done. Hopefully you've learned from this little virtual pond tour as much as I've learned building these projects. This showcase is not at all about showing you the best projects we've ever done or the biggest or that kind of stuff, but it's more about an education and what I've learned from these projects, from how I bid them out to how I didn't bid them out to design to access, that kind of stuff. So hopefully you guys get something out of this. Thanks for joining me. Hang on tight, here we go. All right guys, we're at stop one. What you're gonna see throughout the entire day is kind of a representation of what I love so much about ponds and backyards. I love front yards that are well maintained. They don't look better than the Joneses, they just look nice. And then when you come into a backyard and you see this, it's just a shocking, change like how on earth did this happen back here really cool pond definitely a wreck pond we actually even put in some stairs here that kind of go down into about four and a half feet of water there's a slate bottom floor which is easy to walk on great bog filter over there double waterfalls over in there whole pond overflows underneath this bridge right here as you could hear, you discover another waterfall that looks like it just goes into a big wide section of stream, but this is actually a 15 foot by 12 foot, uh, 10 foot bog filter that sits here. So two bog filters on this pond, all going into about a 4,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system. Bridge leads to a sunken patio that gets you up close to these waterfalls and then just a different vantage point of the pond. So this is stop one. I'm excited to do this all day. I love going back to see past customers and uh, I'm gonna take you on the journey. Unbelievable. Here's the advantages to a pond in full sun. Look at the crazy amount of color. You cannot pull this off in a shaded backyard. Just amazing. And I'm not even sure, like the waterfalls, look at even moss growing all over the rocks. The black eyed Susans, the flocks. And you wanna see something really, really cool? So you got the cattails, and but check this out. And then this is an elephant ear that's planted up in the biofalls. Look at the enormous size of those things. That is a 24 inch boulder sitting below it. And those are probably 30 inch leaves. Just crazy. That biofalls is like putting those elephant ears on a giant fertilizer tablet. So I'm always super impressed with the whole yard and it's not even the best part. The best part is actually the fish, the deck that Terry built, the view obviously from inside the house. Look at the reflection. How awesome is that with the color? The gazebo, I mean they are living the aquascape lifestyle. This is only stop two. All right guys, this is stop three. This is a project we built like three years ago. I've been in contact with him quite a bit. You know, he calls and asks about fish and plants and that kind of stuff, but haven't been back here really since we built it. So I'm super excited to see what it looks like. And oh, this is awesome. So the best customers are people that love gardening. And I'm not just talking about vegetable garden, but you can tell if they've got a vegetable garden, they're probably into other parts of gardening too. You can see a little eggplant kind of growing there. You got lots of tomatoes, all kinds of stuff. You can see the, all the herbs and stuff back over in there. This is a project that's always fun because they allowed me kind of design a lot of the space. This area here, this was really important. They wanted an outdoor seating area screened in and they wanted a fire pit. And so like always, we designed the waterfall for them to be visible from inside the house, but then sitting by the fire, with the sound of the waterfall in the distance in the fall is great and then they have this fantastic room to sit in and uh, enjoy the pond. I think they've done an unbelievable job. To me what makes or breaks every pond is 100% the landscaping that comes in afterwards and they're doing a terrific, terrific job. I love like all the little ground covers, the different sedums that are now creeping in between stuff and this is only its second year so imagine as that Japanese maple there this gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You can tell the difference between an experienced pond owner and a new pond owner based on how many water lettuce and how many water hyacinth they buy in the beginning of the year. The lilies look fantastic, the fish look great. There's babies darting around all over the place. So you can tell it's a super healthy ecosystem. Well, that's the end of uh, stop three. We're gonna go get my kids. We'll go see another one. Terry, thanks so much. 
Thank it looks you. great. I wasn't planning on showing you this one. I came out here with Greg doing some of the vlogging stuff and it's definitely one of my favorite ponds for so many reasons. One, the family, two, the landscape, three, the design, but the way it's matured over the last five years is insane. I'm just gonna kind of give you a tour and let you know what went into it. Uh, hopefully you guys appreciate it, hope you like it. So check this out. This is the gate I just walked through and you kind of come around and I love water features that just kind of keep enticing you to move through the yard and as you move through you constantly discover more and more so you're greeted by this waterfall here it actually falls into about a 3,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system water comes down through that downspout there's our first flush comes over this way he's got a booster pump that sits over there this was actually inspired off of my pond you can see the stone steps that come in grandchildren kind of get down in here and play it's a mini version of mine. What I was talking about before is the water actually entices you to come back in here. So you really want to see where it comes from. And so as you come into this space, which is just epic, right? Big solid metal roof, all the lights, the ceiling fan, and then the view, the view from here is great. So we went with a flagstone patio here, and then here's their pond. Now originally, this was just supposed to be one long meandering stream. And I asked Rob, I said, hey, last chance to make a pond. And he said, well, how much harder would it be? It was like a couple more scoops <laughs> with the bucket. To get this stuff to cantilever out over it, we just have wall stone, just like a unilock type material that's right on top of the liner and then that sits on top, giving us that clean uh, cantilever edge. So love the pond. Again, the landscape is insane. And we get this really cool waterfall kind of over into the distance. You guys have heard me say this before, something psychological about bridges. There's not a person in the world that can resist crossing the bridge. My personal rule with the bridge though is that better lead to something. So let's go follow that just like everybody else would. Go down the pathway, keep discovering different evergreens. I love this I, I, I love how every turn there's something new to discover. Yeah. Right? And look at Abby, you know, little, <laughs> right in the water right there. <laughs> so great little waterfall, not little, kind of big, got a 9PL on it, combination of moss rock and weathered limestone. Uh, this is a cool little rock with a hole in it that just gives us this little bubbling rock look over here. But we've got a spillway there and a biofalls over there. Genius in the way it's all hidden with the ketoniasters coming over the side, some juniper, some creeping jenny, just to give it more of this spring fed look over there. And some of the challenges with this are obviously, you know, as we were excavating, where do we put all the dirt? Well, luckily they had all this, but we had to maintain drainage over there. So there's a pretty massive retaining wall that holds all of this up. On the other side, it continues to slope. As we move through here, the pathway led to their fire pit, and this was the end. And so I always like these kind of quiet areas back over in here. But the more they sat over in their campground themed fire pit area, their eyes went that way. And so we built this a couple years ago. And so this just has a really cool view of a big waterfall. Now the tricky part with this waterfall is their natural drainage from their yard started from the other side of that fence, moved down through here and this way. So this waterfall here has a 600 gallon reservoir in it, just enough to keep this thing moving whenever they want, but it accepts water from drainage through this dry stream bed we put in. And when we do dry stream beds, we try to make them look like their biggest regret was that they wish they got them running. So we've got some massive, massive boulders in here Water comes through there, comes through here. He says when it's raining, this thing is raging with water moving through it. Another big cool stone bridge, and then this moves all the way down and around. Now once again, you can see a little bit of a bridge over there. So now you wonder how do you get to that? The mystery continues. So we move on this way. It's my son trying to figure out the drone. How many people do you know have a teepee, an actual authentic teepee in their backyard? So you come back here, you discover this whole thing, and it's not just a facade, it's real. So they actually come in here, and I wish you guys could smell it, but they come back here, they can take naps, um, they actually get fires back in here, you can kind of sit back, relax, it's just a super cool setting. So he puts this up and takes it down every year. Then you see another pathway, and you see a pathway, you want to know where it goes, kind of comes around comes back up through here, leads you down to that dry creek bed, or eventually back down 
to this bridge. Now we get another different view of that dry creek bed. Some more cool evergreens, dragon eye pine. Pathway comes down to another bridge and then full circle back to where we started. And that's that pondless area, rainwater harvesting area we started. And you got to discover now more of this part of the pond as we went. So I hope you guys like this one. It was a challenge, but a fun yard. And when you get to work with creative people and they share the same creative outlook you do on things, it can turn out really cool. Every project is made or broken by the landscape that comes in. And Rob and his wife, Colleen, have done an amazing job. On to the next one. This is one of my all time favorites. I've known Peggy for, gosh, 20 some years. They brought me out on this. They were gonna build their dream home. We originally built a pond for them. I think it was like a six by eight foot pond. Dave Kelly actually sold it. Peggy and I really hit it off and then they wanted to make it bigger. And I said, well, if you guys are moving in a couple years, why would you spend the money to make your pond bigger? Why don't you save it so we could do something really elaborate at uh, your new house? And she was floored that I would say no to a paycheck. Well, she called me back and said, when we move to our dream house, what do you think? And I saw the big slope. You can tell I just walked down some stairs and anytime you get a walkout basement, you get a slope to work with. And so here's what we created. We have an amazing aqua blue pond. They love these aqua blue boulders. And so we have a fantastic pond. It's about 35 feet from this edge to that edge. The pond's got an awesome shape. I love the size of a lot of the rocks. It has a vanishing edge and it has really a true vanishing edge because just on the other side of this, there's a huge ravine that goes down. So the pond really just disappears. There's the waterfall, still the same piece of wood that's been in there now for probably 12, 15 years. But to capture all the water off of a 70 foot stream and a 35 foot pond means I had to do a pretty big reservoir. And then my favorite part is of course the stream. The stream's just absolutely incredible. And it's incredible not because of so much of what we do, is carving the boulders and all that kind of stuff. But it's her green thumb and the way the plants come in. So if I were to say to pay attention to anything, don't pay so much attention to the rock placement, but look at how the plants absolutely make this project. Little hidden falls over here. The reason I wanted this waterfall here is because if you didn't notice, this is a land bridge. So the water actually comes down, disappears through a tunnel and then reappears over here. And a bridge needs to lead to something which is the sitting area over here. And so when sitting over here, you discover different angle of these waterfalls. And then as we move up the staircase, we discover more waterfalls or down the staircase. And every time I'm here, I remember vividly, and these are just learning things that I've picked up over the years, but I remember vividly dealing with the general contractor for the construction of the home. And he had zero confidence in me trying to pull this off and build this thing at such a young age and uh, he really didn't want me to do it. He wanted to do it himself. A guy that builds homes building ponds, go figure. But uh, afterwards he apologized and said this is some of the nicest he's ever seen. The one thing I did learn about this project is aqua blues are really hard to work with. Blue granite basically, very heavy, very dense. The other tricky thing with this one, as you can tell the yard kind of slopes this way and then of course goes towards the ravine. So we have an enormous amount of stone, I'll show you in a second, in the retaining wall to hold all this up. And then a raised bog filter up in here. So this whole thing is a bog filter. And then back over here, you can see all the rocks used to hold that elevation to keep this bog filter um, up here without it eroding away and everything. And so because I have a great relationship with Peggy and try to maintain great relationships with all of our customers, I remember sitting over here saying, Peggy, with that big ravine that we have back and through here, it's hard for you to see anything from up in this spot from inside your house. We really need to take advantage of the backside over here. So we built this waterfall probably about five, six years ago. So the magic of this place has a little to do with the water, but actually has a lot to do with Peggy's eye for design and everything else. And that whole mystery thing that you hear me talk about all the time. So even as you cross this bridge, which is really an awesome bridge, you see our stacked urn over there. And this gives you a good idea of what that ravine looks like that she's planted up. And she does all of this herself. She brings in a guy to help her do some weeding uh, a couple times a week, but that's it. So you get our great stacked urn over here. And then these pathways, which are all lined with just fallen tree limbs from the property. And every place you look, there's some kind of whimsical little piece of art. And I love the attention to detail. 
So as we come over here, it was really important for me to do some kind of stepping stone across this pathway. And so we've got this great little stream. From over there, basically all you saw was this waterfall. But once you've gotten over here, you discover that you've got this great little kind of upper pool and it's usually just loaded with frogs but the water quality looks pristine and let's get down in here and give you guys a better look so nothing really too fancy you know we took advantage of some of these flat rocks to create some different sheets but just like all waterfalls big rock on one side big rock on another and then you start piecing stuff together in between big rock big rock something in between big rock big rock something in between and you just kind of keep repeating as you move up the hillside. The aqua blues do look great. I love them in shaded backyards. Sometimes you get a little bleached out or almost too hot looking in a full sun backyard, but in these shaded backyards, they look great. Now the challenge with this one was that the bridge was already in, this was already done, so we didn't really have access to get back down in here. So what we did is we came down this path and a lot of this landscaping wasn't done over in here and I could get our little machine in just by removing the logs on this side. And so we brought all of our rock in from way over here. So they always maintain this access road right over there so we could bring everything up through here and still do a lot of our construction. Every time I come out, there's additions to the garden. And you could literally spend probably an hour here walking around and just focusing on the detail of the little things she does at the farthest reaches of her property. I mean, look how far back the house is now. Can you even see it through the woods? And then as you get closer back into the area, you start hearing that sound of water again. 